like them. I can't stand them. I don't want to be around them. And when I see them, I want to go the other way. I want to go away fast. When I go to the zoo, the place I dislike the most is the reptile house. It doesn't matter that there's a great big glass barrier between me and them. I want to get away. Just the thought of touching one makes my skin crawl. And hearing that about me, some youth in a former church thought they would have some fun with me, and they got me, yes, a snake. Now, this is a plush toy snake. It's nice and soft and feels good against the skin. Real snakes don't feel like this. Somebody said, yes, they do. They I, you can't convince me of that. Sorry, I don't buy it. Snakes are, ooh. You know, don't get between me and the exit when I see a real snake. No. Nah. There will be a Greg-shaped hole in the wall for me to get away. And yet they are part of God's creation. They're part of the creation that God said it is good. And God used snakes. God used what the King James calls fiery serpents to punish the Israelites when they had done a very naughty thing. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out, out of the land of Egypt, to die in this wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest the miserable food that we have. Let's be blunt. The people's grumbling against Moses, God's chosen servant, was bad enough. The people's grumbling against God was even worse. But for the people to actually grumble about God's gracious gift of the manna, calling this miracle provision of nourishment miserable food, is truly the height of spiritual arrogance. Worse yet, in detesting the manna, the what is it bread that came down out of heaven, that fed the people in the wilderness. In detesting this miracle provision bread, they are detesting the very gift of God with which Jesus would eventually identify himself. I am the bread which came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. I am the bread of heaven. No wonder God punished them. No wonder God sent these snakes to bite them. No wonder God decided, okay, are you, if you're going to detest my gifts, if you're going to detest me, if you're going to detest my gift minister, Moses, then I'm going to give you something to really cry about. If you're going to detest the gift of manna, that I am giving you to feed you, to nourish you here in the wilderness, if you're going to detest me and you're going to detest Moses, then I'm going to give you something to cry about. I'm going to send snakes after you. Now, it, it's not true for here, but I've pastored churches which I, I just wish that would happen, okay? <laughs> they're, they're, I've had congregations that have detested the Word of God. They've detested God. They've detested me. For example, that congregation with the KKK in it. There are moments in my ministry there where I wish that God would send snakes to bite them. Not very gracious of me, was it? That's what God did here. It was the punishment that God meted out. God didn't just smite them. God sent these poisonous snakes 
to remind them of the poisonous power of detesting the things of God. And the people were dying, and so the people begged God. They begged Moses, please deliver us from these serpents. And so God said, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Rather than take away the snakes, which would have been my preference if I had been an Israelite, to get rid of them slithery things. No thank you. Rather than get rid of the snakes, God rubbed their noses in their sin. By taking that which was attacking them, the detestable snakes, and converting them into a reminder of their sin, as well as a symbol of their salvation. It's as if God was saying, okay, you want to detest my gifts? You want to detest what I'm going to give you? Detest this. And turn to this for deliverance. This bronze serpent on a pole came to be called Nahushtan, which in Hebrew means quite literally that brass thing. They didn't really know what to call it other than that brass thing. It became an important part of Israelite worship. And eventually people began worshiping it, burning incense to it rather than being reminded of their sin by it. Eventually, Nahushtan had to be destroyed, had to be broken apart into pieces, but not before God's message was made clear. Don't disrespect, reject, or despise the gifts of God. This is a danger which we all face today, my brothers and sisters. It is so easy to find ourselves despising, rejecting, or disrespecting God, God's grace, God's servants. God's grace comes to us in many ways. God's grace comes to us in worship, in prayer, in the reading of Scripture, in preaching, in teaching in service, in giving. God's grace comes to us through the sacrament of Holy Communion, in Holy Baptism, in fasting. God's grace comes to us in many ways. These are just the drop in the bucket, my friends. God's grace comes to us through many means, through many instruments. And when we fail, to partake of them, when we fail to participate in and with them, when we fail to go to them and use them as God has ordained, when we fail to accept them, we are detesting them. When we fail to read Scripture, we are detesting them. When we fail to pray, we are detesting God's gifts of grace. When we fail to gather together, to worship together, we are detesting God's means of grace, God's gifts. When we fail to serve, we are detesting God's gifts, God's means of grace. When we fail to give, we are detesting God's gifts of grace. When we fail to come to the table of the Lord or make up excuses for why we don't feel we should come, we are detesting God's gifts, God's grace. Is it any wonder when we detest the things of God, when we turn our back on the things of God, when we refuse to read Scripture, refuse to worship, refuse to pray, refuse to serve, refuse to take communion, 
Is it any wonder when we do these things, when we detest God's grace, God's works, God's love, God's presence, when we detest God, is it any wonder that snakes show up in our lives? Take a look in your lives today. Lent is a time to prepare. Lent is the season of the church year in which we have set aside some time to examine our living, examine our way of life, examine our spiritual disciplines, examine ourselves to see where we are in our spiritual walk, where we are in our walk of sanctification, where we are with Jesus. It is a time that we've set aside to prepare to see our culpability in the death of Jesus on the cross for our sin, to recognize that he went to the cross for us, and it is a time to see where we need Jesus anew and afresh in our living. So there's no better time like the season of Lent, these days before Easter, to stand back and look for the serpents in our living. Look for the serpents that surround us. Look for those serpents that sometimes have the names of neighbors who entice you into going to that game rather than to church. Serpents. Serpents that entice you to spend money on things other than what God has called you to spend it on. To give not to the ministry of God, but to your own joys and concerns. To, to disrespect the call to give, the call to serve. To, to think to yourself, I'd rather watch this movie than pray. That got me last night. I knew I needed to pray before I went to bed. I have a very long list of things to pray for. I knew I needed to do it. I knew I needed to do it for myself. But I sat there in front of the television set and finished watching a movie instead. And guess what happened? Yes, I drifted off to sleep. I pulled myself up out of the chair about 9.30. I, you know, I've, I've been fighting. Woo. Thank you, God. I've been fighting. I've been fighting this sinus infection, icky stuff. And so I decided I was going to go ahead and go to bed. So I had thought about it. Should I go into my chapel and pray? I finished. Well, I fell asleep watching the movie. Now I need to go to bed. So I took some drugs, thought about praying, and I went to bed instead. And the movie was The Serpent. Yes, I could blame it on the illness, but it was the movie that was The Serpent. What is the serpent in your life? Sometimes the serpents are devious. Sometimes they're obvious. Sometimes they sneak in like little plush toys and then surprise you with their fangs. What serpents are gathering around you to bite, to distract you? What are you detesting? of the gifts and graces of God. Now, not everybody who come, doesn't come to the table of the Lord, not everybody who can't come to church is detesting the things of God. I had a church member in a previous church named Jason. Jason had a trait. He could not eat. He received his nourishment through a peg tube. And he would come to church every single week and he wanted to take communion he would he would break out in tears during the great thanksgiving because he knew that he couldn't take the bread down his throat and he would come forward just just touch the bread to my lips please and in tears he would come to receive the only way he could Similarly, there's a man, he lives in New Mexico. He's a quadriplegic. He'll send me emails, and I know he has written them with his eyes. 
His computer watches his eyes, and when he blinks on a certain letter, he creates the words. And he sits there and he writes me these long letters. And I know it's taken him a long time to write them. He watches me every week over the internet because he cannot get out to go to church. He wants to. He would if he could. So he watches instead. And he prays. Oh, he prays. And he reads scripture. And yes, he can serve. How does he serve? He writes notes of encouragement to preachers like me and to members of churches all around the world when he finds out of their needs. Facebook has been a wonderful instrument for him to be able to communicate with people in need and to exercise a service ministry. And he gives his tithes his offerings of thanksgiving. When I look in my life and I realize all the blessings that I have, I'm amazed by people like this who give and give and give. And I am horrified at the way in which I and so many others detest, disrespect, and reject the gifts of God. I don't know what serpents are crawling around you today ready to bite. But in Christ Jesus, we have an answer to those serpents. You see, there is a connection made today in the reading from John's Gospel that I don't want us to miss. The author of John's Gospel connected, the New Testament church connected Jesus being raised on the cross to Hanush, Nehushtan being raised up in front of the people. And just as the people look to Nehushtan for deliverance, so also we are called to look to Jesus on the cross for our deliverance. What serpents are gathering around you today? Biting at your heels, tempting you into further acts of disobedience to God. Because that's what it is disrespect, despising, rejecting the means of grace in whatever forms they present themselves is disobedience to God, plain and simple. What serpents are crawling around your feet today? Turn to the cross. Turn to the cross and to he who hung upon the cross, Jesus Christ our Lord, he who died upon the cross for us, Turn to the cross this Lent. Turn to the cross this coming Holy Week. Turn to the cross on Easter Sunday morning and see it empty because the tomb is empty. Christ Jesus is risen. Turn to the cross and receive forgiveness and receive the grace. And do not detest the means of grace that God has for us. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I cannot say it loudly and clearly enough. If we're going to live by faith, if we're going to live by faith, walk by faith, talk by faith, proclaim by faith the gospel of Jesus Christ, if we are going to be a people of faith here in this community today, tomorrow, this year, next year, if we're going to be a people of faith, then it takes partaking of the means of grace. It takes exercising the gifts of God's love that come to us in all the means of grace. It takes not despising, not detesting, but employing and using in your life the instruments that God has given us to live by faith. We must be nourished and fed we must be empowered and enabled. And all the means of grace do this for us. There are people who tell me, uh, I, I can't possibly come to the church. I don't feel like going to church. It's when you don't feel like going to church that you need to go to church. 
If I don't feel like reading the Bible, I don't understand it. It's when you don't feel like it and you don't understand it that you need to read it more. I don't feel like praying. I don't know what to pray for. Pray anyway. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to serve. We'll find something for you to do. <laughs> I don't have much to give. A tithe is 10%. You got a dollar, it's a dime. You got $10, it's $1. You got $100, it's $10. It's not hard. But more importantly, God has called us to give as the Holy Spirit has enabled and called and empowered using employing the means of grace it's not hard it's the way that we have of focusing our faith on the things of God and living we can either live by faith employ the means of grace and grow in God or we can sit back and do nothing to test the means of grace and die eternally. And because of God's grace, the choice is ours. What are you going to do? Let us not detest the grace of God. Let us employ it in our living and live by faith. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In your presence, Lord. been listening to a sermon by Dr. Gregory Neal, Senior Pastor of Northgate United Methodist Church and Rector of Grace Incarnate Ministries. Copyright 2012 by Dr. Gregory S. Neal. All rights reserved. For more information or to listen to other sermons by Dr. Neal, visit us on the web at www.revneal.org. That's www.revneal.org. You are also invited to visit us in person at Northgate United Methodist Church, 3700 West Northgate Drive, Irving, Texas, 75062. This program was produced by Dr. Gregory Neal.